watch your bag. Watch your friend. Watch the sister at the end of the tube carriage rocking back and forth in the felt seat with a thespi threaded between her fingers. Nobody notices her Nike sneakers. Leave a three-person radius around the hijabi with the backpack, standing well back from the platform edge. Peace Tommy comes by raking a baseball bat over the white tiles. I spy with my little eye her iPhone screen. She's bumping the floor to the machine. I guess you don't notice our assimilation, our interpretation of cultures, how we crush the mesh of them between our fingers like border fences, how we stitch hybrid flags from the ripped seams of our partitioned lands, how we finesse the spices the colonizers could steal but never seem to learn how to use the season. We integrate the taste of home into your blend dishes, then stand washing up over the kitchen sink, wistfully wishing for some nostalgic rewind of the diasporic ticker tape to a time when Allahu Akbar still made God is great and didn't turn you into a walking pipe bomb. Being a Muslim woman means being a person who can't please either her own community or the Western society that she lives in. I think it's about being a little contradiction sometimes. Um, I think it's being the target of many people's different opinions. But I don't want to be wholly negative, it's also a very beautiful thing. It's being someone who is worthy of respect and if you're a mother and at whom heaven lies at your feet, you know? There are so many beautiful aspects of being a Muslim woman that I don't think I'll talk about because we tend to focus so much on the negative. I feel like everyone has something to say about your body, about your beliefs when you're a Muslim woman. Boom is a poem exploring just that, the contradictions between, or rather than just the crossfire that you're in as a Muslim woman living in the West. Um, and about this amazing, amazing essay by Helen Sisu, who wrote this essay for Martha Medusa. She was um, a French feminist theorist. And in this essay, she's saying, and I hope I get this right, my old teachers don't slate me for this, but essentially what she's saying is when you are a woman who deviates from what society accepts as a woman, you become monstrous. And this poem just builds up to the fact that, you know what? If it means to, that I can be free, I am so happy to be a monster. I am so happy to deviate from every norm as long as I can be myself and I can choose what elements of sort of each part of me come into and, and what they form. No one else gets to tell me that, I do. So that's that's why I'm a producer, I'll laugh about it, why not? I think for me what was really important was that I had lots of different narratives of Islam thrown at me by the media. But when I went to go discover what it was for myself, I was able to find the things that worked for me. So I think if you're a young woman struggling with your faith, do all the research that you can, as long as you are being a good person, as long as you're going with your gut, I think if something feels right, it feels right. Even if in your gut you want to wear a hijab, wear a hijab. If it's too difficult for you, it's too difficult for you. It's not, it's not on your path, maybe it's later on your path, I don't know. But go, go with what feels right. When the hair is poking on your hijab didn't become straight copper wires. When men didn't magnify their desire to strip your veils with sweaty, crepuscular computer screens. Yeah, baby, come for me, come for me, boy, don't come for me. Because even when men lower their gaze, somehow they still manage to make our bodies obscene. Our hips are vilified, and our ladder tights and slip thighs with excuses for men to hide it. As if my sinning justifies yours. Seems no matter who's doing the looking, our wounds, our hunting grounds turn graveyards. We're constantly crucified in our own weaponized bodies, and I have had enough. We are the living ghosts coming to collect alimony for years to come. Coming to collect the education stolen from child brides at 50. Coming to collect the half finished degrees. Coming to collect the buried baby girls. Blessed be that unborn chorus of voices who wouldn't have been allowed to speak, let alone to speak. Blessed be the invisible women who have somehow still flourished like weeds we have overgrown. Let a new garden. Birth around.